So the Easy Flash 3 cartridge has arrived, so I've connected up the Commodore 64 to the video hardware again uh, using the simple 4-bit alternating memory bus using the prototype breadboard here. Uh, the video display has just been switched on and this is the Easy Flash 3 uh, boot up menu screen. So what I'm going to be trying now is that I'm going to be trying this test case. So this test case, which is using the BDD 6502 framework that I wrote, um, runs through this test case. So this test case describes uh, the system that I want to create. So I'm clearing all of the external devices. I'm creating a new video display here. Um, I'm enabling video display and bus debug output. And these various different options here um, set up some debug option, debug output options so I can see some trace, I can see um, BMP files being output for every single uh, rendered video screen. It just helps me to uh, look at the evidence of the test case as it runs. Um, I define that I've got a simple six, uh, overclocked 6502 system here um, and a simple user port to 24-bit bus interfaces installed in this emulated hardware. Um, I then add a characters layer, I show the video window, I render a video display frame which should be blank. Um, I then take, use this syntax here to assemble and compress some example code for displaying a, a screen. Um, and then I execute the display screen procedure until it returns with an RTS. So this is the code. <clears throat> so this is the display screen um, function up here. If you can see that, there we go. And um, it initializes the 24-bit simple bus. Um, it waits for a V-blank. It starts sending, or it sets the address for the palette here at 9C00 with extended memory bus one. Um, it then sends over the palette information. It, it goes to the copy screen routine. The copy screen routine just does a bunch of other stuff. You can see here down at the bottom that um, the binary data for the palette, the bit planes and so on and so forth has been included here. Oh, and screen data too, of course. So that's what all of this does. You know, the copy screen copies in the data into 900 and so on and so forth. Uh, and then after the screen is copied, then it starts copying over the character definitions. Okay. And then it resets the bus down at the bottom, basically releasing the bus. So hopefully there's no contention. So if I run this test case, what we should see on the screen is that we see the emulated uh, window pop up. And then you can see it's bringing in the layers of the character data, three bit planes, three passes through the screen. Because the characters are uploaded first and the colors are uploaded first to the screen, so that's what that's why we're seeing the picture being built up in bit planes. Um, and the characters are not all sequential all the way through here anyway. Um, some of them are repeated and some of them are reused depending on if there's uh, duplicate character definitions. There are some, not many, in this picture. So this is the emulated output. So now what I can do is that I can set up the easy transfer to uh, try and run this. I haven't run this yet on the real hardware. This is just a real test. I mean, uh, in the previous video, I did show using BASIC to test out this prototype board, but um, I haven't tried out that BASIC code again because unfortunately, I'm not able to reliably read the saved information on the tape. Um, I think the C2N data recorder cassette unit is a little bit old. And anyway, it was unhappy, so I couldn't read back the previous tests that I've done. So this is new test, but this is better because I'm able to code on, on the PC. And then I'm able to send over this information. So Commodore 64 screen, video hardware screen, uh, browse, yes, uh, click go. And then Commodore 64 should it say right failed. Why is the right failed? Oh, huh. yes, the right has failed because I don't have the Easy Flash 3 plugged in.
No, that's that's probably there we go. Okay, so let's plug in the easy trash three now. Um, okay, so USB connection is now definitely in. Um, here we go. Let's let's click go. Okay, the screen. Okay, the code is decompressing. Cool. It's actually doing something. Wow, it's building up the layers. Wow. First time, and it worked. First time. Uh, so this screen is is basically identical to the emulated output, which is uh, here. Right? We saw the same. We saw pretty much the same thing. Um, Wow, so cool. So things to note is, is that I think um, even when it was sending through the character definition data in the three bit planes, um, the emulated contention is not quite the same as the contention patterns observed here. Um, that's kind of expected because the contention here is based on trying to write to the memory and it ignores the um, extended memory bus being held high. What I should be doing is that I should be taking, taking both, not just the right timing for the RAM, but also the, the extended memory bus. So I'm, I'm going to, things to note there is, is implement, implement the extended memory bus um, emulation here, which will lock out specific RAMs if the address bits are set appropriately. Um, but yeah, that's really quite cool. And it didn't take too long either. Now the, the even though it's very slow 4-bit memory transfer, it actually worked very well. Wow, magic that was. So I do notice that um, there are some corrupt characters here and here and here. Um, I think this might be um, interference. I did see something like that before in one of the previous videos from the basic tests, where when I reran the basic code, it, it reprogrammed the characters. Um, but I'm going to be doing some more investigation on this. It's either interference or it's something to do with uh, trying to write the character screen memory, perhaps while uh, while it's working through the while it's rendering the video display, while it's showing the visible portion of the screen. What I should be doing, I'll test this out. What I should be doing is that I should be trying to write to the screen memory only in the V blank portion, which starts. Here, the V blank starts at the bottom line of the pixel here, and then of course it cycles back up to the top, and then there's a timed portion of a V blank interval here. I should only be writing character data in the screens and color data in the screen information during the V blank. So I'm gonna try that in the code, and then we'll see what happens. So uh, one moment, please. So here we are back again. I've narrowed down the problem. Um, it wasn't apparently interference, what it was, was that it was contention with the uh, color and screen RAM um, outside of the VBank period. So what I've done is I've changed the code here. Um, and what I've, so for the first portion where it displays the first screen, uh, where it uploads the palette, where it uploads the character definitions, plus also the character screen and the color memory, um, it, it does it without any synchronization to VBank. Uh, and most of the time that's okay, especially for the character definition uh, memory, three bit planes, because um, the extended memory bus has priority on those. However, um, then after it displays the first screen, what it does is that it waits for fire in port B, um, which is actually the space, which is actually mapped to the space bar as well. Um, and then after waiting for the fire, it does a, um, it, it sets up the uh, write byte routine to write up to eight bytes um, before doing a, uh, a vsync wait. So what I did here is that I added a bit of an extra hack. So before this, this uh, write byte routine here was just writing, uh, was just doing this down at the bottom, uh, just asserting the, the memory enable write low and then putting it back high again. What it does now is that if this uh, safe reset variable contains something else apart from um, zero, then it, it does a little countdown. And if it counts down after eight bytes being written, 
across the mem- uh, user port memory interface, then what it does is that it uh, resets. Uh, it, it first of all resets the output um, extended memory bus to zero, releasing the contention. It then does a wait for vblank, and then it loads the previous value for the extended mem- extended memory bus, which is usually one, um, and then it uh, resets the timer, and then it sets the extended memory bus. So. Um, what this does is that it releases, releases the contention and then uh, waits for the vblank, sets the contention back again, but in preparation for writing uh, more bytes. And, and this means that it's only doing up to eight bytes of writing during the vblank period, um, considering all of the other shifting and all of the bitwise shifting and everything else that it's doing, uh, and, you know, and, and sending four bits at a time and stuff like that. Eight bytes seems to be uh, stable. So when I run the emulated code again um, with the same test scenario, uh, we get exactly the same output here. That's because um, there is no emulated RAM contention. That might be a thing to note, actually, is that I might want to put in emulated screen RAM corruption due to contention during of screen writes during the visible portion. I might do that um, because that would be quite cool. It will make the emulation more uh, close. It will make the emulation much closer to the emulator uh, to the real hardware. So now I've, I've got that code. Now it's compiled, assembled up and, and compressed up. What I can do is that I can use the easy transfer utility to kick off another test run against the real hardware. So here we go. Uh, click on the go button, uploading to the Commodore 64, decompressing. Right, so here we go. Dink. Right, there we are. <clears throat> um, as we can see, we've got a, a corrupt character here, another corrupt character here, um, and maybe I don't see any off the chat, but we've got two pretty obvious ones here. So now, if we, if we look at the code, again, if we remind ourselves what the code does, it's just executed this line. So now it's waiting for fire or space to be pressed. Then it will go off and do the copy screen again. Copy screen just updates the character data and the color data. So now if I press the space bar on the Commodore 64, <laughs> here we go. And there we go. That's cool. So, um, and the border uh, flash once on the Commodore 64's display as well uh, to indicate that it's finished doing that and the screen looks perfect. So if I press space again, Commodore 64 screen should change, there we go. Border changed to red this time. And now we can keep on writing the same values to the screen memory and everything looks fine. So that indicates that it shows that, you know, the, the V blank of V blank writes for the character screen and, and color screen information um, mitigates this issue, which is good because this is this is what I would expect from the real hardware. So what I'm going to do is that I might tweak the code slightly uh, to do an increment of the color screen values and, and the character screen values, so we can cycle through all of the characters in the screen whenever a space is pressed. I might do that. Let's just give that a quick go. So here we are back again. Uh, I've just going to try a quick hack here. So after it displays the first screen, what it does is that inside the Commodore 64's memory, it increments all of the character and color screen data uh, for the whole range by one each iteration before then sending over the screen data to the video hardware again. Um, what this means is that we should see uh, every time I press space, we should see this screen gradually becoming more and more jumbled as the character and the screen definitions um, and, and the color and, and the color definitions and also the flips and everything else um, depending on their initial values will will get gradually more and more jumbled up uh, the colors will change the, the 
the character definitions will change and maybe their rotations will as well but it won't be that noticeable because the rotations well the flips rather um, horizontal and vertical flips are all in the upper bits anyway so um, I've just sent that to the to the Commodore 64 the video hardware is now just updated its first screen um, of course we're seeing these ones again these errant characters because the first screen upload was was done during uh, the visible portion, not inside the V blank. So now what we do is that when I press space, we can see that the screen and then the color information is gradually becoming more and more jumbled. So the clouds have changed color because they're in the next palette along and so on and so forth. So update the screen, update the color information, two separate passes of course, because they're in the first and second portions of the, of the memory in, in screen memory. So if I press space again, that's cool. That indicates that everything is really working quite very nicely. Uh, very happy with that. Um, so the Easy Flash 3 is great. It, it allows me to write code which under emulation it behaves pretty much the same as it does on the real hardware.